Hello, my name is Kai and welcome to the Theoretical YouTube channel, where last year we released this video. How many calories does Santa eat? In that video, I covered a wide range of topics, from how calories work and how they relate to mechanical energy, to Hamiltonian cycles and optimal path tracing. All of that served to answer the question, how many calories does Santa eat every Christmas, and is that enough energy to fly a sleigh around the world? I got to research and explain a lot of different concepts for that video, and I just had a lot of fun making it, so I wanted to do something similar this year. But I already did a video on Christmas, so I thought, I'll choose a different holiday this year. Thanksgiving. For those of you who don't live in the United States, and I guess don't know what Thanksgiving is, I honestly have no idea how much people know about Thanksgiving outside of the US. But for those of you who don't know what it is, here's a brief rundown. Thanksgiving is one of those holidays where y'all just get together and eat a lot of food. I mean, technically it originated from the story all American children are taught as kids about how the Native Americans just saved the pilgrims from, like, certain death because of winter, and then an Abraham Lincoln had something to do with it when he made it a national holiday, but really all anyone cares about is the food. Oh, also American football. For some reason that's a part of it now, too. But as with all family gatherings, no one really likes each other, and there's bound to be one or two shouting matches. And I thought, why not put all that energy to a good use? So for all of us who will be spending Thanksgiving as a Zoom mukbang this year, how loud would your family have to yell to cook a Thanksgiving turkey? Okay, so the first thing we need to figure out how loud we'd have to yell at a turkey to cook it is how much energy we need to put into the turkey. If you look up whether you can cook food by yelling at it online, you'll get a lot of people trying to explain it with some questionable methods. I'll get back to what makes these methods questionable later, but they have the main idea down. Anytime you yell, you vibrate your vocal cords, which puts energy into the air around them as they hit the individual particles. Then that energy is propagated through the air as pressure waves. That means that there are areas of high pressure and areas of low pressure alternating one after another, and when the wave comes in contact with the surface like your eardrum, the drum vibrates in the same way, and that's how we can hear each other speak. Essentially, we're just starting a chain reaction. Your vocal cords hit the air, the air particles hit each other all the way down to where the air particles hit the eardrum, and we can interpret that as sound. But if this is all just a transfer of energy, then that means we can use it to put energy into a turkey. So then, how much energy do we have to put into it? Well, there's a handy equation designed just for that. The amount of energy you need to put into any object to raise that object a certain number of degrees is Q equals mc times the change in T, where Q is the amount of energy, m is the mass, c is a constant for the object itself called the specific heat capacity, we already know that for a turkey, and the change in T is the change in temperature. So now we just need to plug in values for the variables, find the energy we need to put in, and see how long it would take to put that much energy into the turkey just by yelling, right? Wrong. Those are exactly the questionable methods that I mentioned you could find online for this kind of problem. Particularly this website I found that tried to find how long it would take to heat up a cup of coffee by yelling at it, which just had all sorts of stuff wrong with it. I mean, they tried to explain to the reader what energy was by defining it as power multiplied by time, even though power is almost always defined as energy divided by time. They're technically right, but it's just a really confusing way to explain it to someone. They eventually landed on the conclusion that you can heat up a cup of coffee 50 degrees Celsius if you yelled at it for one year, seven months, 26 days, 20 hours, 26 minutes, and 40 seconds. And that's it. If you yell at a cup of coffee for one and a half years, it will be hot. The math seems to make sense, but in reality, you know that's wrong, right? If you left a speaker playing a non-stop 80 decibel yell, which is average for a human, at a cup of coffee, then it doesn't matter how long you play it, the coffee won't heat up very much at all. And that's because whoever did this calculation left out one key part of the scenario. The coffee is going to cool down just from being in a room that is colder than it. If a hot cup of coffee gets cold in less than an hour, then yelling at it, even for a very long time, isn't going to do anything. 
They assumed that all of the energy going into this cup of coffee was staying there, and the only way for that to happen is if A, the coffee is in a vacuum, but we know it's not because they're transferring energy into it through the air, or B, the room heats up with the coffee, but at that point, you might as well just put it in an oven instead of yelling at it. So as we go back to our turkey, we need to make sure to take this into account. Instead of just stopping here and plugging in our values, I went ahead and solved the equation for the final temperature. And now we have that the temperature of our turkey at any given time is equal to the energy put into it so far, divided by the mass and the specific heat capacity, plus the initial temperature. But there's no time variable in there, so I replaced the energy put into the turkey so far with the power applied to it times the amount of time it's been. And just as a heads up, all of the variables I'm going to be using are measured in these units down here. Alright, now here I did something that might seem a bit odd, but it'll make sense later. I did a bit of calculus to find the derivative of the temperature with respect to time. That basically means that if we plug everything into this equation, then we will get the amount that the temperature is changing at any given time, or the slope of the previous function. You'll notice here that the derivative is actually constant, and that's because there's no time variable hiding in any of the others. And that makes a lot of sense. If you yell at something with a constant power, then it will go up the same temperature no matter what time it is. Also, the fact that it's constant will really help us out when we need to integrate it later. Okay, so now that we have the equation for the change in temperature with respect to time for our turkey, we need to take into account how much the turkey is cooling due to the air around it. There's another equation for this exact purpose, and it's called Newton's Law of Cooling. Either because Newton discovered it, or he stole it from someone else. It's hard to tell these days. The equation makes a lot of sense. It basically says that the amount the temperature of an object is changing is negatively proportional to the temperature of the object minus the temperature of the room. So when the difference in temperature is big, the object is going to cool down faster, and when the object is just slightly warmer than the room around it, it will cool down slower. That negative is just to make sure that when the difference is positive, the temperature will go down. We could just subtract the object's temperature from the surrounding temperature, but this is just how Newton wrote it. And as to what that K is, well, that's another constant that's different for every material. And to find that, we need to do some math. If we integrate this equation and rearrange it a bit, then we find that the temperature of the object with respect to time is actually represented by two equations. One for when the turkey is hotter than the air around it, and one for when it's cooler than the air around it. The reason we get two equations is that there's a natural log in there, and the inside of a natural log can't be negative, so we have to put some absolute value signs around it, and those are just the two cases for the absolute value. Just a reminder, that C there is a constant because we integrated, and the E is Euler's number. Great, so how do we figure out the two constants C and K? Well, now we get to consult our cookbooks. Or just look up how to cook a turkey on Google, because I don't have that in a cookbook anywhere. If it takes approximately 13 minutes to cook every pound of turkey, and we're using a pretty average-sized 15-pound turkey, then it will take about 10,296 seconds to fully cook. And if we are assuming that it is fully cooked at 80 degrees Celsius, and it's starting at 20 degrees Celsius, then we can plug those into this equation. Here we're using time zero, where the turkey is about 20 degrees Celsius, room temperature. We can subtract that 204 from both sides, and multiply the negative k times 0 in the exponent, since we know that will just be 0. And then, anything to the 0th power is just 1, so we know that c is now equal to 184. Then if we say that the temperature at 10,296 seconds is 80 degrees Celsius, since that's when it's fully cooked, then we can solve for k with some algebra, and we get that k equals 3.8331 times 10 to the negative fifth, or 0.00003833, a very small number, but that's our number. Okay, so now we know that our turkey is going to heat up at that rate and cool down at this rate, so if you add them together, then you get the rate at which the turkey either heats up or cools down. And now what we want to do is make sure that the turkey is always heating up, because that was the big problem with the coffee cup solution. To do that, we just have to make the equation greater than zero at all times. Now we can just plug in all of our values using the highest temperature it's going to be for the temperature, and solve for power. When we do that, we get that the power we need to apply to this turkey must be greater than 3.87755 times 10 to the negative 2 kilowatts, or 38.7755 watts. And that may not sound like a lot, but keep in mind, we are only applying this with our voice. Now, if you take that number and divide it by the surface area of our turkey, then we can get the intensity of the sound we have to apply to the turkey. 
I'm just going to assume that the turkey is a sphere with a 15 centimeter radius to make things easier on myself. And every time I tried to look at the surface area of a turkey, it just gave me the country. A sphere with a radius of 15 centimeters has a surface area of 0.09 pi square meters. And if we divide our power by that, then we get that we need to input 137.14 watts to every square meter of this turkey. First, Alexander Graham Bell made a unit to measure sound called the bell. Not only was this scale logarithmic, meaning every 10 bells you go up, the sound gets twice as loud, but it's also relative due to that i naught or the reference intensity. That number can be anything you want, but it has to be the same as someone else's if you want to compare notes. Scientists have just decided that that number is going to be 10 to the negative 12th, because that's the lower threshold of human hearing, so that zero bells would be that threshold. Also, the bell was just way too big to use for anything. For instance, one bell is the sound of a quiet room. 10 bells is already the sound of a busy train station, and 20 bells would cause instantaneous death. So instead of using bells, we use one-tenth of a bell, a decibel or a decibel. It's complicated, but it's an equation and it works. As I said earlier, the average human yells at 80 decibels from a meter away when using 10 to the negative 12th as a reference intensity. So when we plug that in, we get that one person outputs 10 to the negative 4th watts per square meter. So when we divide 137.14 by 10 to the negative 4th, we get that we would need 1,371,402 people to yell at this turkey to heat it up to 80 degrees Celsius. Well, not exactly. If we integrate our equation to get the temperature at any given time, we can see that it's an exponential equation. And when we graph the equation, it has a horizontal asymptote at 80 degrees Celsius, meaning that we will get infinitely close to 80 degrees Celsius, but never really reach that. However, all you'll need is one more person to tip it over the edge. Granted, it will still take a long time to get there, but if you don't care that it's exactly 80 degrees Celsius, then it reaches 99% of that in 31 hours, 95% of that in 19 hours, and 90% in just 14 hours. Oh, and if you're wondering how loud that actually is, this is one of the rare cases where we can use bells since they are so large. This would be about 14 bells or 140 decibels, which is just about as loud as a shotgun going off inside of your ear. Except instead of a short burst, this is a 15 to 30 hour long drone. It's not technically enough to cause instant death, but everyone will be walking away from this endeavor with bleeding ears and some delicious turkey. Happy Thanksgiving. There are a few things I opted not to include in this video that I probably should have if we were actually going to try to do this. But like all good scientists, I believe in space-traveling spherical bovines. But for instance, sound is just a very bad way to transfer energy. First, it's extremely difficult to control the direction of the waves since they just spread out from a single point, so a lot of the energy would just head off in the opposite direction of the turkey. Second, of the waves that do hit the turkey, most of them will bounce off rather than be absorbed, making the process even less efficient. Third, all of the waves are going to be interacting with each other, so you're going to get a lot of destructive interference. So instead of yelling, everyone really has to be singing at the same pitch, or at least a harmonic of that pitch. And finally, the measurement I gave for a human yelling being 80 decibels, that's only when measured from a meter away. Which makes sense. Let's say that we had this event in a stadium with a turkey in the middle. If you were standing in the middle of the stadium and someone in the stands yelled at you, it wouldn't be 80 decibels. This is also because the sound travels out from a single point. The farther it gets, the more area it has to cover. It's like blowing up a balloon. The more you do so, the thinner the material gets. This is called an inverse square law, and if you want to learn more, just go look it up or take a physics class or something, but I'm done. If you like this video, you can do so down there. You can also subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content. This video was less about the concepts and more me just explaining my working out, but believe me, I've got a Harry Potter video and a Superman video coming up that are heavy on the mathematical and scientific concepts. It's gonna be great. You can also watch another one of these videos that just appeared in front of my face or comment something below, like another insane holiday-themed problem for me to work out. I really like doing these. But anyway, that's it for this video, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Space-traveling spherical bovines.